welcome everybody. You're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. Today we will use one hot encoding principal component analysis with K modes and we'll do some plotting. As always, the code is in the link and description below. We need a few new libraries today and if you do not have them, please install KLAR, Matrix, and Cluster. We are also using Markdown Knitter Tidyverse and Quan Tita. So, if you're new to this, we're dealing with sales data. And today, we're interested in the description, item description quantity, and unit price of that item. So, each item description is just a string that we had to pre process using natural language processing in the previous video where we created word clouds. If you're interested in that, Please look at the video in the card above. Now we created tokens last time where we separated a string into individual words and broke that down to take out punctuation, um, digits, and any word symbols. And there were still further words that we had that were either useless or didn't have meaning, such as these that I further took out. If you notice here, we have almost one and a half million individual words, but these are not unique words. These are just words that occur um, outright. So what we need to do is break up these words. And if you notice, we still have further processing that needs to be done. For instance, these digits right here need to be taken out as well as individual characters such as these that are just plain useless. So in order to do that, you call a function, which is from quantity to call tokens re underscore remove. I'm not coding this out today because I am having issues with memory in my machine and processing these data while recording. So we call this function called tokens underscore remove, where we take our list of uh, words that I call tokens with no stop words. And I'm using the pattern for regular expressions of taking digits between one and five and length uh, separated by a word. Then I need to take at least a minimum character length of each string of three where I call the separate function of tokens underscore select where I take my new data that I store and if you notice here we lost a little over 70 words out of our 2001. From this you can still do further processing such as word stemming to get rid of further words. So if you have like toys, toy box, toy, and you only wanted to keep toy instead of all the different versions, and then, and then you take another unique and that shrink this list down even more to be more concise. I didn't do that, but that, that's something I would suggest is do word stemming next. Then to do the one hot encoding, what we're basically doing is having rows, which are the item description, which is a word string, and the columns, are the list of individual words and you're trying to find out does this substring exist so you say does this individual word exist within this string of words or sentence and you're basically creating a matrix of this with 387,000 rows by almost 2,000 columns so that's pretty big so you got to figure this is going to take a long time doing the looks so it took me about 10 minutes with 16 gigs of RAM and an i7 processor on my older MacBook. So what you're doing here is you're basically taking your list of words that you're doing your comparison with while you're calling a function you're creating with grep and you're looking at each individual string for this particular word. Then if that word is there, you get a true. Otherwise, you get a false. So you have 1930 columns by 387,000 rows. So since this S apply returns a matrix, I convert it into a data frame. From this data frame, I then need to manipulate it where I'm saying I am using the S apply which takes in as an input a list, a data frame or a vector and it returns a matrix or a vector, okay? And then the L apply takes in a function and returns a vector. So this is dot logical uh, returning a true or false, which is all of these columns here. So I'm saying this call what we just stored our variable in and take all rows 
with the logical columns of true and false and change that true and false into a numeric which would be your binary variable for your encoding. From there, since I'm returning either a matrix or a vector, you throw it into a data frame once again, and then I chose to add a new column for unit price. Well, what does this even look like, right? So let's look at this real quick. And here's what it looks like. So we have our binary encoding. So we did our one hot encoding. We have this separate column right here. This is what I'll do for some pre-processing so I can do my uh, PCA. Now you can take this as it is and do PCA. You could also do any kind of regression if that's what you're doing for that analysis. From there, I stored it as distinct values, but this is a little misleading because here, if I wanted to do the counts of each one of these columns, you're gonna have a problem. So this negate that. And I wanna mention something. If you wanna do any kind of analysis that allows you to do this kind of setup, like one hot encoding or label encoding, and let's say you wanted to create a sparse matrix, you could use the library matrix with the capital M and create a sparse matrix. And I showed this for two reasons. The amount of data you're saving is uh, 100 fold. So it's 100 times smaller almost in size by converting this exact data into a sparse matrix that you could still input into whatever analysis you're doing that's relevant. So consider that if you're using a large data set and memory is a problem. Now, I want to show something here. Where is it? There it is. What I did was say I would like to take each one of these unit prices and put them in a range of values that I could use, such as this. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted to link similar items by prices and use these prices here in this column and transform my data where this row is actually a column so I can use for my clustering, okay? So what's going on with this? It's kind of goofy, right? Well, if we separate this, something. so you have just a regular if-else statement, but it's highly nested. So what would you do with this? We'll just make up a variable name so we could print this out. So I need to, let's call rest of data and let's call it a new column called wow x let's just do that okay so what happens here i created this new column called wow x so anything less than a dollar gets this new label and anything else becomes just an o so what you do is you do the same similar thing but instead of the second parameter you throw in another if else statement and continue this in order to create your a threshold and so I did uh, five different ones and so this may look intimidating but if you break it apart just pay attention that each time you have your second parameter that you would call in after this you just throw another if else in there and then at the end you just have the last uh, value that you would like unless you wanted to go further so that's what's going on with this so I have to subset these data so I'm only interested, like I said in the beginning, is these three columns where I want the quantity, the unit price, and the description of my item. And from there, I need to take the data subset where I'm saying, I would like to take this price range and make that my columns. And I'm saying, instead of having long data, which is a bunch of rows, I want to have it go wide, which is in column wise instead. And then I want everything on the rows, think of like an ID, you know, of just rows, just think of it like that. And that's all my descriptions. And then since this is basically pivoting everything, you end up with a bunch of, a bunch of NAs that I have to fill with zero. And so that's what's going on here. So if you notice, here's my description, which is basically like an ID column. All these columns are my quantity based on one to three dollars three to five dollars, less than a dollar, etc. And this is what I use to plug in for my principal component analysis. So I call in PR comp, which is the function in the cluster library. 
and I'm excluding the first column because it's non-numeric, this right here. And then I call K modes because originally I was dealing with categorical data. And so I said arbitrarily, let's look at calling that same data, iterating eight times. I don't want any weighted values here. And then I want to do um, seven for my, I think it's centers. I can't remember. Oh, so it'd be modes. There's a thing called a scree plot that you can create to help you dictate how many clusters are ideal for your data type. So what I did here, after you, you do your PCA, you have a few things that are available to you. Okay. So you have a few things that are related. So I called the standard deviation. This is all of your principal components, and then this is your rotation. Uh, I didn't scale in this circumstance, and there's your centers. What I did was I called standard deviation squared, which will give me my variance proportion here. So this is showing me that with this plot, roughly 60% of my variance is already covered before I hit the second principal component, which is pretty good because usually most of your variance is explained within the first two principal components. Then, if you don't do that squared for the variance, what you end up with is your eigenvalues, if you pay attention. And it's just a little bit different, not exactly the same. Then, you could plot each principal component relative to each other. All right, so I could do, since I have five principal components, here, there. Since I have five principal components, I could just kind of browse through and look at what these look like, right? Then I colored them with the K modes cluster. So pay attention to that. So here we are showing that X, X deals with all of our principal components. Okay. So I'm taking that column wise and I'm taking the variance and I'm dividing by the sum of that. And that's what's giving the proportion of variance that's explained within our data. Now, there's something interesting that you can note. So let's scroll back here to the top. And let's say scale equals true. Do the same thing, but just pay attention. That just changed scaling our data. Now it's saying that only 22% of our data is explained. And now let's pay attention here. And you look at this and you say, wow. That's really interesting. Everything changed as soon as I scaled the data and centered. So that's what's going on with this. Also, if you pay attention, the explained variance for everything changes and it's almost all the same. Now, I'm not going into the explanation of what these data mean today. I'm just showing you how you code it and explain how you can use, um, in essence, a custom one-hot encoding if you had to make it. As always, I would like to say thank you for watching. Please subscribe and turn on that notification bell and leave a comment. Let me know what I could do to make this channel better for all of us. See you in the next video. Bye.